Today, my friends, we're going to be taking a look at the life and works of Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1928. He helped develop pop art, one of the best known and most fun periods of art ever. Andy Warhol also became one of the most famous artists ever. He may have been the first and only art superstar. Andy Warhol's best-known paintings and prints are usually brightly colored. They have simple but strong shapes that really stand out. Andy often showed things that were a popular part of everyday modern life, like supermarket products and rock stars. The name pop art comes from the word popular. When people first started seeing pop art, many of them were shocked. They couldn't believe that serious artists would make sculptures and pictures of such ordinary objects. But pop artists like Andy Warhol, Klaus Oldenburg, and Roy Lichtenstein were just doing what artists have always done. They were creating art about things that were important or familiar in their everyday lives. This is a soft sculpture by the artist Klaus Oldenburg. This is a painting by Roy Lichtenstein. Andy Warhol had a natural talent for art. His mother encouraged him and even helped him with his drawings when he was little. She was a pretty good artist, too. At an early age, Andy started having some strange medical problems. First, he started feeling nervous, shaky a lot. Then, for some reason, he started to lose his skin color. Andy was becoming paler all the time. His mother insisted he spend a lot of time resting in bed. Andy enjoyed taking time out to rest. He colored read his favorite comic books, and listened to the radio. He especially liked reading movie magazines. Andy always loved movies. He dreamed about the exciting and glamorous lives of his favorite movie stars. Andy showed so much interest in art at school that his teachers suggested he take weekend art classes at the nearby Carnegie Museum of Art. Andy met other talented kids there. Some of them were from rich families. For the first time, Andy saw how wealthy people lived. He imagined how nice it would be to have lots of money. Even though Andy's family never had much money, Andy's father managed to save enough to send his son to art college. After Andy graduated from high school, he studied design and illustration at the Carnegie Institute of Technology. While he was there, he developed an unusual art style. He drew his subject in pencil, just like we do, and then went over the pencil lines in ink. Then, before the ink dried, Andy pressed his picture down onto a clean sheet of paper. This gave him a really neat blotted line look. After Andy graduated from art college, he went to New York City to look for a job. Because he had very little money, he carried his drawings and artwork around in a brown paper grocery bag. After showing his work to a lot of different advertising agencies and magazine publishers, Andy finally got lucky. An art director at Glamour Magazine asked Andy to do some drawings of shoes to illustrate a story. Andy was thrilled. Not only was he going to make some money, but shoes were one of Andy's favorite things to draw. This is that illustration from Glamour Magazine. Later on, Andy did a whole series of ads for a big shoe store in New York and even made some fun shoe drawings. For himself, he kept using his blotted line method, and everyone thought his illustrations were really original and great fun. His blotted line art seemed to have an energy to it, almost like it was dancing around on the page. Andy kept getting more and more jobs, and before he knew it, he was making lots of money. This is another one of Andy's shoe illustrations for a magazine. Finally, Andy was able to move into a nice, big apartment. By this time, Andy's father had died, and his mother decided to move in with him. Andy was getting more work all the time. Not only was he doing magazine illustrations, but he started decorating department store windows. He was also designing greeting cards, record albums, and book covers. He even drew suns, clouds, and raindrops for a television weather report. Andy had so much work now that he sometimes asked his friends to help him finish things up. 
Andy's mom often did hand lettering for his illustrations. Andy was becoming one of the busiest and wealthiest illustrators in New York City. When he found time to relax, Andy often went to movies and art galleries. During this time, Andy saw the work of two artists that really impressed him. Jasper Johns and Robert Rauschenberg were doing new and exciting things with painting and sculpture. This is a Jasper Johns painting. Jasper Johns is known for repeating an image over and over throughout the work. This is a sculpture by Robert Rauschenberg. Rauschenberg is well known for doing found object sculpture. So he would just roam around New York and pick up trash and then put it, assemble it together to make artwork. This is following in a tra the tradition of Marcel Duchamp, who was a French surrealist artist. Both of these artists had also done department store window displays like Andy, but now they were becoming famous for their more serious artwork. Andy Warhol decided it was time for him to become a serious artist too. Even though Andy's dream of making lots of money was coming true, there was still something he wanted. More than anything else in the world, Andy wanted to be famous. Andy went to work right away. He made paintings of comic strip characters, newspaper ads, and supermarket products. Andy was looking for a way to make his art different from anyone else's, but he wasn't getting anywhere. No one seemed at all interested in Andy's paintings. So here we have one of his supermarket items for Dr. Scholes. Here we have one of his copies of a comic strip. Now, Warhol ran into some controversy with this type of painting because it was so very similar to what Roy Lichtenstein had already been doing, as we saw back here. So this is a Lichtenstein. This is a Warhol. Lichtenstein, Warhol. Liechtenstein, Warhol. See, the very, very, very similar types of images. Andy started getting nervous about what to do. Finally, a friend told him she knew exactly what to do, but it would cost Andy $50 to find out. Andy gladly paid his friend. She told him that since he loved money so much, he should paint money. For the same $50, she added another idea, to paint something he saw every day like a can of Campbell's soup. Andy thought his friend's ideas were great. Right away, he started painting pictures of money and soup cans. Andy Warhol often asked people for ideas. He thought it was a normal part of creating things. Andy always made sure, though, that the way he showed those ideas was original and all his own. Now, in addition, this is, this is the Campbell's soup can. This is a well-known Warhol print. Now, not only he mentioned that his friend gave him this idea, but also Andy grew up eating this soup. This was a food item that was an important part of his childhood. He had a lot of memories attached to it, which made it more meaningful for him as an individual artist. Andy worked as hard as he could. He painted soup cans on blank backgrounds to make them stand out and seem very important. Andy tried to make his paintings of money and canned soup look like they were printed or made by a machine. Andy Warhol had a lifelong dream of becoming a machine, like an actual machine, like a robot cyborg machine, the way they were made in real life. He thought repeated images were an important part of pop art, too, because things are repeated in real life all the time. It's kind of like when you see the same TV commercials all the time or the same ads and billboards popping up. Um, TV news shows and newspapers often repeat the same story over and over again, too. In modern terms, where it's mentioning the part about TV billboards and TV commercials, think about when you see the same ads over and over and over again on the Internet. Same idea. And there's one of his prints of the money. Andy Warhol's paintings finally started catching on. People enjoyed the fun, bright colors and pictures of things that were familiar to them. Andy was so busy, he not only had to get help from his mother and friends, he also had to hire assistants. They all worked in a big studio that Andy called the factory. Andy started using a way to print his paintings called photo silk screening. Now he and his helpers could make hundreds of copies of each painting. Sometimes Andy gave unclear direction to his assistants. He wanted to see if they would come up with interesting surprises. Andy believed he did Even though he's screen printing, 
the images are not usually all the exact same. There will be minor differences in each of the prints from the series. Andy Warhol went on to make paintings and prints of all kinds of popular subjects. So around this time, the whole paint-by-numbers craze was a big thing. So Andy would design a paint-by-numbers, but then paint half of it. Here we have um, images that he's taken from a newspaper. We have one of his most famous prints of the, the beautiful and talented Marilyn Monroe. And then we have this picture of a cow. This picture of a cow, he repeated this picture over and over and used it to make wallpaper out of. For a while, Andy stopped painting and started making movies of everyday events like sleep, which showed a man sleeping for six hours with no cuts, no editing. Six hours of footage of a man sleeping. Empire showed the same view of the Empire State Building for eight hours. And eat showed a man eating a mushroom for 45 minutes. Andy's movies got a lot of attention and are considered an important part of art and film history. Andy Warhol's life was filled with excitement. He was always in the news for one reason or another. By the time he died in 1987, he was a wealthy and famous artist, just what he had always hoped to be. Andy Warhol's pop art was really more than just a series of fun pictures of popular subjects. His best paintings and prints were beautifully designed. They are strong and powerful images with great colors. Andy's artwork and films made many people take a look around them and think about what really was and wasn't important in their lives.